Okay, Mamo, uh, we, sorry, in Spanish just <laughs> came, came up, as you could see. <laughs> Spanish. We, are, we are going to start the, the, the seminar today, and um, it's a pleasure for me to, to welcome uh, Felipe Vicencio. Uh, he's a researcher, engineer, educator. He works uh, now at um, uh, the University of San Sebastián in Chile. He did his degree at the Catholic University of Chile and then the PhD in Bristol. And uh, he has been working with uh, Nick Alexander on the area of uh, soil structure, soil, not oh, sorry, structure, soil structure interaction, and all the complicated stuff there. So I'm very much looking forward to hearing from you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you for being here. Um, um, I will start with a kind of organization of this talk. First, uh, a small introduction of uh, San Sebastian University. Probably you never heard about. <laughs> this is why I think it's a good idea to, to present where I come from. Then uh, a small introduction about structural so structural interaction. Okay, so basically the idea is to consider the interaction between multiple structure through the soils. Okay. Uh, then uh, some results that uh, we we got during my PhD study um, before, and then the future research. So what we can do uh, af uh, after that? Uh, well, I come from Santiago. Uh, Santiago is in Chile. Chile is South America. Uh, it's very far away from here. I take a flight in 14 hours, so it's, it's a long trip. But it's a small country, uh, a very beautiful country. Uh, this is Santiago, where the university has the main ca ca campus. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, the Andes, okay? Uh, and Santiago is a, is a big city. It's like six million of inhabitants, and we have a very important airport there. So. Uh, the seismic problem is important in Chile, uh, and always we try to research this different topic. And this is the university. Uh, well, some numbers. It's, it's a relatively new university founded in 1989, uh, 24,000 students. So it's like a medium-sized university. Uh, 6,100 graduate students, um, 560 students in engineering. And we have four engineering departments. One of them is, is the civil engineering department, where we are working at. Okay, so some introduction if you never hear about, about this problem. So basically, uh, in big cities like Santiago, when you have a, a large density of, of buildings, you have this kind of a scenario. When you have multiple buildings and you have some connection through the soils, okay? It's not a physical connection. It's not that the foundation and touching or something like that, but because they're very close to each other, there's some... Uh, uh, interaction through the soils uh, and, and, and some energy pass through one building to another building. So basically, urbanization and modern lifestyles have caused a gradual shift in the human population from rural to urban areas. Okay, so this is a typical happening in, in large cities and possibility of significant seismic interaction between the buildings through the underlying soil. So during my PhD, we start uh, with the most easy uh, model of this problem. We have uh, buildings with three degrees of freedom, two lateral degree of freedom, and one rocking degree of freedom that represent the foundation. So it's, it's a very simple model okay, of one building. But when interesting, in this scenario where we got two buildings, okay? But now are connected, okay? So the difficult part is try to understand this connection, okay? Because 
we never modeled the soil. It's a simplification of the reality. Okay, so one alternative is model the whole soil. Okay, and model the two buildings. But our first uh, idea is try to simplify this difficult mo uh, problem uh, in this in in this uh, form. So you can write the, the different equation, the kinetic energy, the potential energy, and obviously you can consider linear and non-linear behavior in the buildings, in the soils, and in the in interaction. Okay. Um, well, this is the potential energy, and as you can see, basically this bit is the interaction between the building. So if you delay this part, just the building are, are, are disconnected. But if you include this term, okay, uh, in some ways you consider that the building are connected through the soils, okay? Uh, well, in this case, uh, also, we model the soil as a nonlinear, okay? So we did different model. We compare the difference between linear and nonlinear, uh, and this kind of stuff. And then we write the Euler Lagrange equation of motion, okay, to get the mass, the damping, and the stiffness matrix of the system, okay? Our main idea is to calibrate and try to, to write the equation that govern the interaction and spring and the change of the, sti the stiffness of the soil uh, do the another building. So uh, this is a 3D graph because uh, in this simple model, you have the two buildings, but it's possible to have in a, any arrange uh, uh, compared with the building one, okay? And this red, um, this red line is the numerical simulation. This blue line is the uh, mathematical formulation of the problem. And the uh, square dots are the um, uh, experimental results that we get, okay? Uh, and at the end, we are kind of confident that uh, the three different formulations using different ideas, we start to get the same, okay? And obviously, after that, uh, we calculate different experimental dot in different position between the two buildings, okay? And this is the interactional springs. Uh, it's very interesting because the stiffness of the interactional springs is negative. What is the meaning of the negative stiffness? Is if you have a clockwise rotation of the first foundation, you have an anti-clockwise rotation in the second foundation. So this is the meaning of the negative stiffness. You have a, a different rotation between each other. Uh, well, this is. Uh, the part of the experimental part that we did in, in Bristol in the shaking tables. Also, we did some final element method model, okay, in MATLAB, uh, in Plaxis. I think this is MIDAS, okay. So, the idea is to be confident that uh, our simple model is, is get a, a good result, okay. Uh, uh, well, obviously, you know that the experimental part is is is, is difficult because uh, it's not possible to modulate a hundred or a thousand different parameters. So you you have to choose like five or ten different configurations. So this is the building alone, and this is with two buildings, and this is with three buildings, and then we check it uh, using real earthquakes. Uh, one limitation of this uh, experimental part is that we use a, a foam. It's not a real soil. And the problem of that is if you use a real soil, uh, the idea is to uh, compare, uh, compare uh, the response of the first building and then 
the response of the first building when you have the second building next to each other. But in the first run, you have a densification of the soil because of the earthquake. And then when you put a second building and test again, you have a different soil properties because of the densification in the first test. So it's, 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 it's very difficult to, to try to keep the, the main feature uh, of this problem using real soil, okay? Uh, so at the end, uh, we did some simplification and, and we use these kind of fake soils. Uh, well, anyways, after that, uh, we tried with real soil and also we get some points uh, also to calibrate uh, using uh, uh, real soil in, in our model, okay? This is some equation. The interesting part is uh, the mass matrix is diagonal and the stiffness matrix is also diagonal, but they have this term uh, outside of the diagonal that produce the interaction. So basically these two terms negative, okay, produce the interaction. And also you have this new coefficient that also include the chain of the stiffness uh, beneath the foundation uh, do the another uh, building. So then we start to run this model for different earthquakes, okay? We choose 15, uh, 50 different earthquakes, 22 far fields, 14 near fields with a pulse, and 14 near fields with light, so the idea is to see if there's some difference in the change in the response to different kind of earthquakes. Okay. So this is uh, the results that we get. Okay. So in red line is the cobalt case. So basically, we're including the structural soil structural interaction, and the blue line is the uncoupled case. Okay, for displacement and for acceleration. Note that this graph is just for one earthquake and one configuration. Okay, so uh, we run five million different uh, time series. Okay, uh, in the in blue crystal is this is supercomputer in in, in Bristol, uh, where when we change the earthquake, we change the height the width and, and different parameters on the soil and in the buildings, okay? But this is just one case. Uh, and you can see there are some difference, okay? In this case, you have an increase in the response. Uh, the thing is, uh, we measure the change in the response through the whole uh, time history. We didn't measure the change is young one peak. So we sum the change through the whole time history, okay? So basically for the displacement, we have an increase in 78% in the acceleration, 120%. Remember that is the sum in the whole change through the whole time series, okay? And this is, well, this is a graph of power spectral density of this signal. Uh, the idea is to see uh, where the peak is, no, sir. All right. So, uh, and this is for this configuration. This is for building one, and for building two, something interesting happens if the building one increase its response, in building two decrease its response. So basically, it's a transfer of energy between building two through building one. And the response on building two decrease in 45% and in acceleration in 16%. Uh, so basically, uh, this is effect is like a, 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 a two mass damper, okay? So uh, because in some ways, there are some relationship between the period of these two buildings. And for this particular relationship, you have an increase in building one in the response, in the seismic response, and a decrease in the seismic response on building two. Okay, here also uh, 
as an example for a different uh, building parameters. Okay. Uh, in this case, uh, we got a 63% in amplification for displacement and 51% in the case of acceleration. Okay. Now it's interesting to notice this peak in the power spectral density, and and this peak represents the the first mode. This frequency represents the first mode of the second buildings. Okay. So basically, uh, impose this this deformation in the building uh, one, and you can see uh, this peak in the acceleration because basically the acceleration uh, is not affected in low frequency uh, uh, near to this value. Okay. Uh, well. Uh, I put this graph just to understand uh, why this, why you have this large amplification, 258 percent, um, and the thing is you have a big amplification in the rotation of building one. Well. So basically, you have a, a, a rocket mode imposed for building two in building one. Well. Okay, so basically uh, this. Uh, a small frequency of the movement represents the, the, the frequency of building two that impo impose this movement on building one. Okay. So then this is the contour plot where I put here all the results uh, when we change the height ratio, okay, and the aspect ratio. So basically, for example, for this point, this is the configuration that I use. Okay, so height ratio 1.1 and width ratio uh, uh, aspect ratio 1.5. And, and a different point, we got this configuration. So it's possible to see any kind of configuration between just two buildings uh, for far field records. This is the maximum value for all the records that I considered, and this is the average. Okay, so basically the reality is more close than this value. Okay, because the means basically uh, is 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 like the mean of all the earthquake, uh, and not just the peaks. Okay, so basically it's interesting that uh, this is for the acceleration. Uh, you get some important amplification for k to ratio 1.1. And for some particular aspect ratio. Okay, so one important parameter is the height ratio. Okay, so basically you can see uh, the height ratio like uh, uh, the ratio between the, the, the period of the structure. Yeah, the, the period of the height is some information that you have about a, every building and the, and the width of the buildings. Okay, so this is more results for different kind of earthquake, near fields, uh, uh, pulse like records, and the feature of the graph is pretty much the same. Okay, uh, so basically the earthquake is important, but at the end, all the earthquakes affect pretty much the same in this, uh, in, in this phenomenon. And near fields. Uh, without pools. Okay, so for some records, you have a very important amplification, but if you take the average, it's like 30% in change of power. Okay, this is for acceleration. Obviously, you can have the same graph in displacement. Okay, just because I have a, li a, a limited time, just yes, I put. Uh, the acceleration, but the displacement is pretty much the same. This is not so different. And uh, now uh, this is for the all records, but for dense soils. Okay. So basically, you have a a, a, a better uh, soil. Okay. So dense soil is like a shear velocity 300 meters per second, something like that, 350. For loose soils, we are thinking about 180, 200 meters per second. And in this case, 
the amplification between the buildings decrease. So this phenomenon is not important or is less important than for loose soil. So you, if you have a rock, this phenomenon practically don't exist and it's, it's possible to not consider. But for loose soil, it's something that uh, worth to take into account. And now, uh, some example for different interbuilding spacing. So basically, uh, we run for a small gap between the buildings, and then we start to increase this gap. So we start to separate the buildings. So this is the interbuilding spacing. Uh, it's a logarithmic scale. So basically, here we have a 50% uh, of the width of the building as a separation. 100, 200, and um, 300% of the width of the buildings. Uh, as you can see, for uh, one interbuilding spacing, 100% of the width of the building, basically this phenomenon is, is less than 20%, so it's not so important. But if you have the building very close to each other, this phenomenon is is more relevant and more important. So this conclusion for us uh, makes sense. And, and obviously when uh, you test with experimental uh, results, we get a good fit. Now you can extend the same results of two buildings for any kind of building. The first thing is you have to write again the equation. Okay, so it's pretty much the same. The most important difference is this double sum. That's basically consider uh, the interaction between any buildings that close to each other. Okay, so basically these buildings are connected with this, with this, and with this building. Obviously, you can have any range of buildings. This is just an example, okay? Um, and this is some example for a particular theoretical case. It's not a real case, but just a, just to, to to have a, an idea what happened. Okay, so you have the the earthquake in this direction. And if you consider this configuration, all the 12 building has the same height, and you have a 65% of increase and minus 14% of decrease in the response. Okay, so the difficulty of that is is a little more difficult to have in sight because you have probably infinite configuration of of any buildings. Okay, so well, in our paper, we did different configuration with different height, with configuration in L, uh, in square, with 12, uh, 22 buildings, and then in any, any kind of buildings. And this is an uh, interesting figures because uh, if you remember in, in the slide that I showed you before, the two buildings are aligned through the earthquake. But basically, you can have the earthquake in this direction and has this building in any position. So basically, this contour plot represents this a, a, a scenario where you have building one, a building two over here, or maybe building two over here on any position. So depends of the position, you can have, in some cases, amplification and in some cases, reduction on the response, okay? Uh, and this is very interesting because there are some experimental results uh, uh, using nuclear plant that they did exactly the same using real buildings. Basically, you have, they have two buildings aligned in this direction and then two buildings aligned in, in this direction and they have here an increase and here an decrease. So basically the, the features are the same that we get with this uh, simplification model. 
simplify model. Okay. So, like a conclusion, uh, at the moment, the effect of the structure soil structure interaction is unfavorable for building one when building two is stellar. Okay. Uh, there are an increase in the response up to 150% as a change in power in deceleration and 400% in displacement. This is just for a particular case for a particular earthquake. Okay, so represents just one dot, but as a general trend, it's like 30 40% of change. The entire building is supposed a low frequency rigid body working mode on the small building. Uh, for dense soils, the effect of structural soil structural interaction is less relevant compared with lot soils, and the couple effects decrease as the space in between the buildings increase. Okay. So, what are we doing now? And in this moment, we extend our model to consider any configuration of building for any. A, a plant size, okay? Because in the beginning we consider just a square buildings, but now we are considered for circular building, for L-shaped building, for rectangular building, for different kind of buildings. And the thing is, you have to calculate the interaction spring for every case, and then you generalize for a, every every configuration. So you have to do it a first step first, and then calibrate using finite element method, uh, experimental method, and then we are sure about your results. You you write basically you your program for every kind of buildings. And probably in one more years, our idea is to write a kind of software where you you can choose. A part, a part of the, your city, okay, S something like that, and choose, I don't know, 120 buildings, okay, when you know the size of the building, the general uh, size, and the height and the material of the buildings, the position between each other, and then run and see if, what is the influence of this building uh, do the another buildings and all the other buildings. And then, for example, in the future, if you have a new project, for example, in this position, uh, it's possible to calculate the increase of the seismic rigs or probably the reduction of the seismic rig. If you put a building here, a new building, for example, uh, 15 stories, and then calculate uh, near of this building, what is the the change in the response because of this building? So, so now we are writing all this equation and and all these results in a way of software where you can write uh, and put this input and calculate uh, the ch uh, the change of the seismic risks in in a kind of neighborhood. And obviously, at the end, the good thing of that is very quick. For example, uh, for some tests that we did uh, in a linear case for 120 buildings, uh, it takes like uh, three hours to run in a simple computer. Okay, So it's very quick. In a different studies that we choose pretty much the same buildings, it take, I don't know, one month and a half using a different approach in a supercomputer. So for us, uh, it, it's kind of very interesting, but the problem is if, if you change one parameter, you have to run again uh, the whole month uh, in, in a supercomputer, but this kind of approach, uh, you can, modulate uh, something very difficult in a simple way, get some growth number uh, and have a good approach. But this is some reference about the uh, some figures that I show you now. 
And, and that's it. <laughs> no, I don't know if you have some question, comments, or something to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we have uh, we have enough uh, time for uh, a few questions. So, do you have any questions? I can I can start with um, with one. I think that the 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 model that you've developed is uh, maybe I'm wrong, but it's conservative, right? So, are you considering any damping in the in the soil at all, or or? Well, uh, no. Well, we consider we consider the five percent damping for the whole system. Yeah. It's, it's like a a modal damping, but it's five percent for every mode in the system. Uh, you can you can change this model, for example, for the for the mode that represent the soils. We try this, for example, for the mode that the rocking mode and consider 10% in this case, but but pretty much the the the, the, the results uh, don't change very much. But yes, this is this is a, a, a yeah is 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 conservative. And um, in, in um, so you are showing values of change mainly in uh, this percentage. You said it's spread throughout the whole duration of the of the yes. motion, right? Do you have any value? Because for us, it will be easier to understand peak values. Let's say peak values of displacements, for example. Do you have any any number there? Any idea? A twenty percent, thirty percent for and now when you have that because you showed at the end towards the end you have a, you have a, um and you mentioned that this was tested for nuclear power plants yes right? and you have regions where it amplifies and regions where it yes but as far as understood the earthquake was applied just in one direction yes the, the earthquake is applied no no not two components once you apply the two components isn't the risk that those who amplify will amplify less those who so basically, it will smear out, and then yes. the importance will be less. Yes, yes, it's true. Yes, it probably. Well, the idea is in the well, in this new model that I'm writing, we consider in in both direction and including the vertical also. The vert but it's true. Uh, if you consider both direction, it's possible in some ways the effects uh, is zero at the end because. When this direction increase and with this direction decrease, so is this is possible to have it? Yeah, it's true. But, but on the other hand, when you show this effect throughout time, it may be more important for issues like low cycle fatigue and stuff like that, right? Because I, I may be wrong, but it seems to me that what you are showing these percentages have a direct correlation with the duration of the strong part. Ah, yes, so yes. Yes. Of response parameters like low cycle fatigue. Yes. Yes, like for example, yeah, this these figures, yeah. So you can see here in a single peak, yeah, it's like I don't know. In this case, ten percent of difference, maybe fifteen percent of difference, and 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 this is something that we saw in, in different cases. Yeah. Any other question? Um, all, all of these results are based on uh, basically at the beginning like a set of experimental work, then you, you have conducted numerical analysis or basically on, on a no, well, this problem, is, this graph are, are the uh, numerical parts, but basically uh, we have the same result for, for example, the same time series in the uh, experiment, uh, in the checking tables, and then we compare with our model. And, and well, it's, it's difficult to compare, but if, if, if you spend uh, time to, to get uh, the sac exactly the same properties at the end because you have a, a, 
a, a model in, in the in the chicken table that is a representation and scale. Okay, so you, you have to do some work to to convert this this model in scale through the computational uh, model. But if 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 you do it right, uh, we 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 get pretty much the same. Yeah. In addition to the scale, also you mentioned that supplementary you assume the form. Yes. And for the sake of validation, you also assume the properties for the form in the in the, in the numerical. Way. Yes. Yes. And then you have to change the properties of the soil. Would it soil, soil, and well, soils, or also no, no, we use three different forms, basically, three with, with, form with, form with form. three different, form. yes, with different uh, stiffness of the form, basically. And the properties of soil are represented in the equations uh, as a stiffness. Yes. The stiffness of the soil. Yes. Which is the soil or, or form for no, no. Well, in this case, is is just uh, for example, in this case, is 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 the shear models and the possible uh, model. Yeah, this is for the real soil. Yeah, yeah. If if you compare it with this experimental results, you have to be careful to compare in a good way. But then, in some ways, we are confident of our model. We forget <laughs> what we. In the experimentals and, and and all the result is is uh, using a, a real property of soils, the real soils, and 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 basically, yeah. Another thing that maybe um, part of it, yeah, I think um, first of all, the it's just to clarify the question because when, when you say numerical, it's a numerical solution to the equations that you have. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not the, the final yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, also they have uh, conducted the some uh, final final yeah, yeah. So but basically, these are the solutions of the uh, equations. Yes. So what, what, how, why you need like some uh, flexes and like this uh, model? Well, we we did we did to calibrate verification as well. Yes. Um, yes. But the problem to 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 doing that if 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 you want to run I don't know 100 different yeah, it takes, uh, yeah but and then you have to change manually the, the height and the width and, and and the size of the soil and then take time in in MATLAB to change the the parameters is just a four <laughs> and and then wait. Also, the buildings are all assumed by. Shape building for the mass and stiffness? Yes. So, yes. I mean, so, because you mentioned also you will try to model different shapes of buildings, like L, L shape or U shape or regular buildings. I mean. No, no, no. No, uh, no. also we consider some irregular building with, with, with torsion. Oh. Yes, yes. We, well, this is a, a, a particular paper that. We we focus just in in, in let, let me show you last in uh, this this one in unsymmetrical plan building to a certain uh, excitation. So in this case, we are just focus what's the influence of the uh, unsymmetrical building in in this in this problem. Thank you. Yeah, it's like a small step because. Um, uh, there's something uh, like in the beginning we well uh, we don't understand very much. <laughs> so you, you have decided to go to to expand the world in the area of going to more complex configurations of um, structures, uh, you know, in terms of the distribution and so on. Mm. Um, is it that the complexity of the soil model, like modeling different stiffness for different frequencies, for example? Is it not you? You judge that not important, or if I compare, my question would be: if I was starting this, I will probably question more these um, the impedance functions. Yes. The soil. Yes. Well, this the, the, there's something that we 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 try in this approach that we consider different layer of the soil, mm -hmm. or, or sometimes different uh, properties. Uh, in depth 
or basic, basically the two kind of soils between one build and, and second buildings. Uh, in this approach, <laughs> we think that uh, we are not 100% sure what is the importance of, of this phenomenon. Uh, but one thing that we are worrying in the beginning is if you consider the nonlinear behavior in the soils, it's, it's the same soil for two or more buildings, but nonlinear behavior, what happened with this interaction? And at the end, uh, the, the nonlinear behavior is concentrated beneath the buildings. Okay. And between the buildings, uh, the, the materials or the soil materials remain elastic, pretty much the same. So basically, the interactional spring don't change too much. Uh, for, well, if, if you increase a very large earthquake, probably your problems are different. Yeah. So, so probably the, the, this kind of phenomenon is not so important and you get so large acceleration in your building that this is the, the, the main problem, the earthquake per se. Just something related to what Christian mentioned before about the, the, di the direction of components in your mm. analysis. I understand correctly what you did pretty much, okay, you pretty much played with the position of the align, uh, alignment between the, the buildings, but just one with just one single direction of the like, Yes. My question is about, okay, you mentioned that you're going to start exploring the bidirectional component, but my question is much more related to the vertical component because sometimes, or oh, I've been speaking as demonstrated, just purely for, for source perspective, mm -hmm. you can have a massive impact, especially when you have a high degree of saturation or pretty much, I don't know, you might the, the, the water table pretty much on the surface. The vibration modes you can have on the soil can completely shift it in the way that you have to the dry soil. Maybe it's going it's too much complicated before going that, that area, but what do you think or what you can foresee in terms of the vertical, the magnitude or the impact of the vertical component? The yeah, vertical components? yeah uh, well, in, in the beginning we thought that probably, well, the vertical acceleration of the building obviously affects the seismic response of a single building. If you have a different buildings, we are not so sure if if there are transfer of energy at, at the moment. Uh, we 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 tried because at, at uh, in the beginning, uh, well until now, uh, this is the model, pretty simple model that were considered just the rocking. So basically, uh, this this interaction springs considers just the rocking degree of freedom. And, and we did some exploration considering the, the rotational ground motion. So because, because, in, because we are connecting through the rotation, so it's possible to consider the rotational ground motion. So then you have an interaction. The problem is we don't know what is the interaction in spring between the vertical component. And and when we start to explore that, uh, we are not sure how to measure. It, it, probably uh, you have to put uh, this foundation and measure the, the, the vertical displacement in this one and, and see how affect one with another. It's, it's possible to do it, but at the moment, I don't know how important is it. So that brings another question. How did you measure the rock in there? The rotation. The, so you say it's, it's more difficult to measure the vertical, the vertical um, linkage, right, between the two buildings. Yes. But the rocking, how do you? Well, it's 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 it's, it's the same. Well, <laughs> but basically, it, 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 why the vertical will be more difficult than the rock? No. Uh, when when we did the the rocking. Uh, we, we measure the rocking in this foundation, and we have a kind of relationship in, in the lab. So, so basically, 
if 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 you're rocking one, you have a kind of rocking here is point one, for example. Yeah. Then we did with the vertical, but I don't know if if the problem was the setup or, or something like that. But when we, when we we measure one in in this foundation, we get something weird in the another. Some, so so it's, it's, it's not a, a completely vertical deformation in the building too. So also you have a kind of so yeah. <laughs> so so we thought oh I, I don't know what happened. So let's try with this first, and then probably in the future. Uh, so the vertical ground motion will affect a lot of the rocking response as well. Yes 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 for sure yeah. Any final question? It's just uh, just to ask if how you uh, well you mentioned that initially you were exploring linear and nonlinear type of model of structures, and I don't remember if you mentioned something about the nonlinearity of the soil. Yes, yes, we uh, in, in that case, in that case, definitely uh, the magnitude of the earthquake is going to affect yes. the of, of, In that, that case, uh, do you have any uh, kind of general recommendation what you can adopt for for for, for, for model if we imagine the story from my geotechnics professor how to address that part because the non itself okay uh, the springs works for simplified models but at the end of the day your stiffness your properties everything is strain dependent yes so that's my my question from <laughs> From the other side of the of the of the street, pretty much from from the the things. Yes, the, well, uh, yeah, yeah. When when it was a very uh, difficult part because uh, in some ways we try to to update the stiffness of the soil in every time step. So. So we changed the, the stiffness uh, using a Bullweb model that was calibrated. I, I, I don't remember exactly the, the works. So basically, they recommend some parameters for this rotational stiffness of the soil. Uh, so we use this approach that is work for us. Uh, the interesting part is because you're using a non-linear model, you have an additional damping in the soils. So basically, because you have a non-linear non behavior. And, and this additional damping, in some ways, uh, uh, changes the, the, the shape, of, the shape of, of these figures. So uh, let me show you. I didn't put here, but but basically, in some ways, they 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 shift these figures uh, upwards, uh, and and they well, this is a uh, in some ways try to explain because is the depends of of multiple parameters and the earthquake, so uh, these figures look like a little different if you consider the the non-linear behavior. For for some cases, you have a larger dissipation of energy, uh, but you have a larger deformation. And, and in different cases, is the another way around. But but this is was the approach that what we did. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next to this, no one.